From his home in Jackson Heights, for more than 60 years, Michael Flannery was America's foremost Irish Republican. In his long life, he never deviated from the Republican principles he learned as a young man in County Tipperary. As a young fellow, I thought the whole thing over and looking at our history and everything else, and uh, decided it was the most uncivilized way of ever dealing with uh, things to have war. So I'm totally against war, but history has told me, and I've read a great deal of it, that there's never freedom achieved without violence and war. And if that's the only way you can achieve it, I have to agree with it. So for 11 years, I was a member of the Irish Republican Army. And before I took up a gun to fight, being a pacifist by nature, I looked upon the moral and the national side. I was born in Ireland. If I'd been born outside of it, maybe I wouldn't have been, I'd be interested in the country I was born in. But I was born there, so I had to accept what was the facts there. And then I thought I had a moral right to finish this brutality and uh, disagreeableness about trying to make a living in Ireland. I've never had any trouble in staying with the principles of the Republic. I always looked upon it as a moral duty to do so and my conscience wouldn't allow me, so it was easy for me to stay on the hard road. It's not easy to see the cause being sold by betrayal after betrayal, from the first, second doll to the present day. But we've grown, grown used to these betrayals. His appointment of Grand Marshal of St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York. Sent shockwaves through the establishments on both sides of the Atlantic. All kinds of strokes and skullduggery were resorted to in an effort to thwart and to take from the parade. But he all failed because what mattered most could not be kept away, the people. Despite betrayals, personal attacks, attempts at intimidation, and despite splits in the movement, Flannery remained resolute in his pledge to drive the British out of Ireland. The principles of freedom set forth in Easter week 1916, and first in broadcast by Wolf Tone, in 1891, but when he said to break the connection with England, to never fail in source of all our evils, he spelled out the whole thing there and then, to break the connection. The connection is not broken, so therefore we must adhere to the same principles of tone and the uh, Young Ireland's, the Fianians, and the men of 1916, who said that we must, uh, people of Ireland, should dictate the policies and our own destinies, and this, a republic for all the people of Ireland should be established and adhered to by all the people of Ireland. So when you take these principles, and you just can't get away from them. The connection is not broken, and the Republic has not been established. So until such time as the Republic is established, there must be a Republican Party pledged to establish an Irish Republic for all the people of Ireland. We are not confused anymore about the free state, 26 county government that's posing in Ireland as the Republic of Ireland. They are not the Republic of Ireland. They can never be the Republic of Ireland. The Republic of Ireland must be for all of Ireland, all 
32 counties and all the people, regardless of class or creed, it must be a representative government. And until that is established, then you'll always ha have movements with the principles, with those principles, and ready to fight for those principles if necessary. We do not want war or violence, as they call it, unless it is necessary. But when it is necessary, it cannot be avoided. And it's our moral duty and right to establish peace and do so by the sword if no other means is possible. Thank you. It's sad that people can defect after such great heroism by those who fought and died for our liberty. The uh, thing about Dottie's and Sean's talk bringing us right up to this on the situation as it is today. And it's a very sad situation today when you have uh, defections as late as 1986. Why these defections? Each one of them proves a failure and why they continue to do so is beyond me. But the thing about it is, today we hear so much about negotiations and talks, meaningless words, and meaningless theories about freedom. There's only one definition. Wolf Tone gave it to us almost 200 years ago when he said, break the connection with England the never failing source of all our evil. It was repeated in the proclamation of 1916. We must control our own destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. It's the only solution. And why, in the name of goodness, that England and those who have defected can't see that it's the only solution. It's the principle, and you can't uh, fool around with principles. You can't compromise with principle. You can't compromise truth with falsehood, or justice with tyranny. There's only one way, and that is England to get out of the north, bag and baggage. She has the power to do so. The only factor lies with England. The only power to do so is England's. So let us hope that there will be some sanity about directions, that there will get out of there, that they will destroy the monster that they made in 1920 when they divided the province of Ulster, divided Ireland without the consent of one Irishman, national or unionist. So let us hope that there will be some sincerity about these talks, that they will see the only possible way that peace can be brought about in Ireland, and that is for England to undo the wrongs she has done, that she will get, bring about the unity of the nation, and get out of there for once and for all, and leave the Irish people to govern themselves in peace and unity with all the world.